guys, my name's Sam. This is the Potage Nets podcast. I'm coming to you from a very rainy Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to get today. Hence being inside. Unfortunately, I wanted to film outside, but then the rain came. Uh, if you want to find me online, I am on Instagram as Potage Nets, and I'm on Ravelry as Over and Draw Some More. Both of those links will be down in the description as well as all the other things that I talk about today. Um, I just wanted to quick shout out. Thank you to everyone who sent me really lovely messages or checked in on me. Um, this past week has been really hard. Uh, there's some family stuff going on. I'm not going to go into details, but it's been hitting me pretty hard. So I've been trying to keep busy, which is why I still wanted to film a podcast this week. And, you know, I have garden content to share with you. Um, so yeah, it's been rough, but I really appreciate all the love. So let's get to the podcast though. This is going to be a short one and I'm probably not going to edit it. <sighs> I have one FO. And it is my Rift tea, which I just finally finished. Um, this I have had on the needle since August last year. And I had kind of put it in timeout because I was having a hard time with figuring out how to work the alternating skeins to make all the colors work. I wanted to make sure it still looked really good. And it did. It looks really good. It turned out really well. I'm really happy with how the gradient looks. Um, it fits really well. I actually made it just a little bit longer and it is a long enough length that I will definitely wear it. Um, it's still a little cropped, but it's definitely a comfortable length for me. I have little sleeves added on in some of the blue yarn. Um, yeah, I have leftover yarn from this too. So this yarn um, is a local, uh, it's from a local person. Where did the yarn go? It's not in this bag. It's gone. <laughs> Um, I had it in here so that I could show you, but I must have dropped it. Oh, I dropped it in the bin earlier. Um, anyway, I do have some of both the blue and the pink left, so it was a gradient yarn. Um, but when I was knitting the back, I realized that if, um, uh, that there was more of the pink left than there was when I knitted in the front, if that makes sense. So I did do a little bit of, uh, extra winding off of the pink so that I could start and make sure that the gradient looks pretty similar on both sides. So, yeah, I think I did a pretty good job. It looks good. Um, the only other thing I had an issue with was the neckline. Um, I did follow the instructions originally with the, like, you pick up stitches and then you're supposed to immediately cast them off. It was really tight. It was really, really tight. I couldn't, I barely got it over my head when I showed my wife. So I just unpicked that and I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. I don't mind the slightly, like, rolled top. It doesn't bother me, so it's fine. Um, it's the only one that's mine. If it doesn't bother me, it's fine. Um, yeah. So I don't know that I would make another one of these just because there's a lot of cropped tops that I could do. I kind of want to do one of the Mount Pleasant tops. That was one that I was interested in, but I think one rift is good enough. But it is a very good crop top pattern that is extremely size inclusive. There's lots of adjustments that you can make. Um, it has you do your own custom measurements for your armholes. Um, you can adjust for your bust. It's great. So yeah, highly recommend if you're looking for a good size inclusive top, but I'm happy with my just one. <laughs> it was definitely a good exercise of the brain too, to make sure that I got everything, uh, working okay. And that was in my Tesla knits bag. I'll have to find something else good to put in that project bag. Um, so that's my only FO for this week. I, yeah. That's the only thing that I finished. I've been working on a lot of stuff, just not finishing a lot of stuff. Uh, but next I have, in this beautiful bag by Marshmallow Witch Knits, uh, my socks. So just before I start talking about whips, this is kind of my concept for what I want to work on whips-wise right now. Um, I want to have at least one pair of socks on the needles, a shawl on the needles, uh, keep working on my Northeasterly, and then probably some sort of spinning project. I don't want to go over that with whips because when I do that I get overwhelmed. I don't really want to work on any more garments right now because they take a while and I get overwhelmed. I just want some smooth sailing knitting going on. Um, I'm not going to knit all vanilla stuff obviously, but I do want stuff that's a little less intense <laughs> and less time intensive. Especially because I'm getting out to the garden, I want to have stuff that I'll still feel like able, I'll be able to finish even though my time is going to be split. So anyway, now that I've gone off on that tangent, here are my socks um, that I'm working on right now. 
They're a pair of vanilla two at a time socks. I used Mina's two at a time socks. Um, I hope you're proud of me. I'm using Progress Keepers now so you can see how far I've come. This one is from Crafticorn. Really cute little uh, succulent Progress Keeper. Um, yeah, so this yarn is Earth Yarns Unique Sock. It's this cool like gradient self-striping colorway. Um, I believe this one was 59 if I remember correctly. I would totally use these self-striping yarns again. It's, it's just really cool to see the gradient. Um, and it still looks nice on the heel. Um, this uses a uh, short row heel, which is what I tend to use anyway on my socks. So, um, yeah, I'm getting pretty close to being done with these. Probably going to make them a little bit longer than I usually do, just so that my wife can comfortably wear them as well. Um... So that's the sock that I'm working on right now. Uh, since I'm pretty close to finishing this one, I was like, well, maybe I should pick my next uh, planned project. So I pulled down this yarn. It is a crafty corn yarn. Uh, it in um, Vin Victorian Gothic is what it's called. Really pretty. This is like my kind of pink. It's like mauvey, rosy pink tones um and I thought this would go really well with the vintage fairy lights sock pattern vintage yeah vintage fairy lights I have it written down so I didn't forget um so yeah I'm a little bit hoping that I can finish those socks tonight so I can cast these on because I'm really excited to work on them I'm just gonna do it one at a time I I've been enjoying doing the two at a time because it means I don't have to worry about second sock syndrome but I am just so excited to work with this that I don't think that's gonna be a problem so yeah, I'm going to keep that in my little basket to take with me back to my little um, uh, comfort hovel on the couch that I've been sitting on, because uh, I'm hoping maybe I can start these tonight. Next, I've been working on my Northeasterly. So this is in my Malia Made It bag. Um, it says Shine Like a Diamond. I love it. It's a perfect size for this project right now, too, which is great. I feel like this might migrate to that bag then, though, when it gets a little bigger. Um, so... I've been working on my Northeasterly. I actually finished row two. So this is my second column. Uh, and then I started, I had started the next one already because I have been um, starting the next row before I finished the previous one just so that I, if there's a yarn that I really want to knit with but it doesn't necessarily look great in the next part of the sequence, I can still do it, if that makes sense. I'm not doing color management as much as I'm doing, like, letting my brain organize things the way that it wants to, even though there might not really be any rhyme or reason to it that I could speak of. Um, so this yarn that I'm working on here is uh, one that I dyed myself. It was actually the yarn mop from when I dyed all those minis, and it's turning out pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, I don't really know what else to say about this. It is my Northeasterly. It's big. I'm not going to finish this by my birthday this year, I don't think, unless I work on nothing but it, but um, I am making progress. I'm trying to work on it a little bit every day so that I can just kind of keep chugging along on it, maybe catch up a little bit more at least, but I think I'd be happy if I finish this like in the next two years. Um, but one thing is I, ha I am, <laughs> I bought some not scrap yarn, but like weird size balls of sock yarn from someone on a D stash. And I would totally be willing to do that from other people. If you have weird amounts of sock yarn that you want to get rid of, I would love to put it in my Northeasterly. <laughs> I'll buy it from you. I'll pay for the shipping. Just give me your weird amounts of sock yarn. I want them. <laughs> Cause I do think that I'm going to hit a point where I have knit through all of my leftover sock yarn and don't have any more because I haven't, like, I've caught up with myself, basically. There, I'm going to hit that point at some point. Um, so, yeah, just trying to delay the inevitable as much as possible. <laughs> um, I'm also, I'm not doing long strips. Like, I did have that one long strip, and I'm not going to undo anything, but I didn't super like the way that that looked. So um, I started, even if I'm not completely done with a ball of yarn, I'll split it and put another section later, so... I think that will be good and it'll just make it look more mixed up and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's been fun to work on. 
I need a nap. Oh my goodness. <sighs> it's a rainy Friday. That's what it's doing to me. I need a nap. I just got this bag. I snatched it up. Um, it's from the Crafting Chi. The Crafting Chai. Shit, Chi. I don't know what the intention is there. So I don't know how it's pronounced. I think it's Chihuahua. Would it be cha Chai? Chi? It's not that important. I'll put their link down below. Snatch it up right when she posted it because it is vegetables and the lining is yellow. So it's kind of perfect for me. So this is my Raina shawl. I just cast this on. This is the shawl that I'm working on right now. It's it's a it's a good basic shawl pattern. Um, not too much excitement. Uh, pretty easy pattern repeats to memorize. There's only two sections with two rows, so it's pretty easy to memorize. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. My stitch marker that I have here is, whoops, flipped up. My serotonin stitch marker that I got from Tomboy Femme Bags. That was from the Operation Social Justice Warrior uh, campaign, um, and I just got that in, so that excited me pretty much. Um, and the yarn, it says Zen Fibers on the tag. I got this as a fiber share uh, thing from my fiber share partner last year. Um, love it so much because it's this beautiful golden purple and like the gold has like red flecks in it um and the color is called royal harvest which i like a lot um i think they changed their name to woodland fiber co and i don't think they're dying anymore they're just doing pattern designing so sorry but i'll link you to her instagram um but yeah i love this yarn it looks really cool for this pattern so i'm happy with it not much more to say there I haven't decided what I'm going to work on after this. I feel like I can probably finish both these socks and this shawl by next one, by next episode, because I'm only filming every other week. So I'll probably be working on one of these two by the next time you see me. Um, so yeah, that's all my whips. Short and sweet. I don't have a lot to talk about them today because... Oh wait, no, I do have one more whip. And that's why I had to refilm this because I forgot to talk about it. Those are my knitting whips. I do have a spinning whip in this basket. So I still have more of the fiber. This is from, this fiber is from West Coast Spinner, West Coast Color. Um, and the colorway I think is called Active Pass and it's Falkland wool. Really like it. I've never worked with Falkland before, but um, it has a really long staple length. Oh, look at me using terminology. Um, it has a long staple length, so it spins really nice and I don't like feel on edge like I do sometimes where I'm if it's a shorter staple staple length I'm like uh what if I pull too hard you know um so this is my little spinning basket that I have Ooh, I just snagged this um so yeah I've been using my little e-spinner this is the electric e wheel nano I feel like everybody has one of these at this point um but I'm working on that I've got a little bump left I always split my um, fiber into smaller pieces so that I can spin it easier. So I end up with these balls. I usually get them in braids and then I just pull them and make them into little balls and then I can just grab a chunk at a time and work through it. Um, anyway, I have two more bobbins full already. I'm going to be taking all of these and chain plying it all together into one beautiful thing that will absolutely be done by next time because i've really been enjoying spinning this has helped me with my anxiety so much like if you don't have a spinner or some sort of e-spinner or a spinning wheel this is a good cheap option and like the sound is heavenly just like the little clicks as it spins is so calming i fucking love it <laughs> So yeah, I've been working on this a lot and I will definitely finish this post haste. Um, I have more fiber. I actually have some witchcrafty lady fiber that um, came in the mail. That was a gift. And um, I have fiber coming from Three Fates yarn, yarns or fibers. I can't remember if it's Three Fates yarns or Three Fates fibers, but I'll put that link down. Um, I will be working on that probably soon too, because it's really pretty. Oh my gosh, I've got a little fuzzball there. Um, I'm excited to get that too. Really pretty. Um, so that is actually all of my whips. Uh, yeah, other than that, I, I did make a mistake. 
which I'm going to own up to. This is one of the masks that I made, and I used alpaca woven something as the ties, and unfortunately, they went through a hot water cycle, a hot wash cycle, and the dryer, and this is what they are now. <sighs> it's my own fault. I should have thought of that, um, but too late now, so I'm going to cut these off, and I think just sew on the outside a couple ribbons onto it so that it works, and I'll probably make a couple more today just so that we have some back stock of masks. Um, yeah. Whoops! So keep that in mind when you're making your mask. Make sure that it can be washed on a hot cycle without felting. Whatever fabric that you use. And pre-wash your fabric. Um, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I think, did I mention that already? I might have. If you want to play Animal Crossing with me, I'll put my friend code down. My Nintendo friend code. We can play Animal Crossing together. Um, so yeah, the other thing is the garden is open. It opened on Monday, but because of everything that was going on, I didn't go right away. Um, I wanted to give myself kind of a day to like reset. Um, but I did go Tuesday and Wednesday. I got some stuff planted out and then we do have plans. Uh, my wife and I are going to go on Saturday. Um, spoiler alert for when I get the video out from all the stuff that I've done so far. I did already break a tool went too hard. Um, yeah, <laughs> I made a mistake. Uh, but I'm really glad that I got what work I did get done on Tuesday and Wednesday done. Um, I took yesterday and today off. So the way that they're kind of managing to make sure that it's safe for everybody is they have alternated days for plots. Now, because my plots are next to each other, um, I can go all days if I want. But, so I'm basically, I'm not going to go every single day, just kind of out of respect, but I might only be able to go, like, Monday or Tuesday, like, two days in a row, and then I just won't go for a few days kind of thing. But the whole intention is just to make sure that it's not, like, everybody rushing the garden all at once. Um, I think, so we're going on Saturday morning. I th it's probably going to be pretty busy, but we're mostly going to plant um, a bunch of stuff. And like I said, my dad and stepmom are going to just swing by and drop off some tools for us because I broke my rake. Uh, you'll be able to see that in the video. I'm going to work on editing. I have footage from before everything got super wacky. Um, there's a little bit of a gap. And then now when uh, I actually get to go out to the garden. So that's really exciting. Um, all those videos will be on this channel um, under... Uh, the name is Fruits and Roots is the, the like, series name, I guess. But still all going to be on this channel because I'm not the kind of person who needs multiple YouTube channels, you know. Um, so yeah, look out for that. That'll be coming out soon once I get it edited. That's kind of the reason why I didn't want to edit this because it's a lot of video editing and processing. I'm just waiting for it to process. <sighs> Lightroom, or, uh, <laughs> um... Premiere Pro is a piece of, of, of technology. It sure is. <coughs> um, I don't think I have anything else to talk about. This is a very short episode today, uh, but I appreciate all of the love you guys have been sending me. If you enjoyed this podcast, please like, please comment. I love reading your comments and responding to them and getting to talk to you guys. Um, share with your friends, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you in two weeks, and I will be posting a gardening video in the very, very near future. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.